Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. It's Monday, which means it is time yet again for one of our viewer special videos. But before we take a look at some of the duels submitted to you all by the viewers, uh, I want to take a moment to uh, shine the spotlight on a few particular viewers. Uh, you've probably seen me talk about in videos here and there or saw the announcement video of our first ever Plex Leaderboard Challenge. Uh, thanks to the kind folks over at Untapped, uh, they were kind enough to sponsor this challenge here in which we take the uh, win rates as recorded by the Untapped Companion from members of our Discord server, and we actually award prizing to those of us who have, or those of you rather, not us, because obviously I'm not in it, but uh, those of you who have uh, the highest win rate of everyone on the Discord server. Uh, we just did our first leaderboard challenge for the last season. I'm very proud to announce the winners. The top five results were Meep Squared, who finished in Diamond with a win rate of 95.2%. Good god damn, that's high. <coughs> Excuse me. We also had L, who finished in Master with a win rate of 73.3%. Jordan, who finished in Master with a win rate of 71.1%. Cave, who finished in Master with a win rate of exactly 70%. And then finally, Coop, who finished with a win rate, uh, in Master, I believe, with a win rate of 64.2%. So, those were the highest win rates of the last season. For this next season, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Rather than giving out five codes all at the end of the season, I'm actually going to be giving out a code every single week. Uh, this code is for a 30-day premium subscription to the Untapped Companion. Uh, and that is going to allow you to see uh, win rates and other stats on the site. Filter decks by rank, by win rate, and by other uh, thresholds so that way you can see the best decks within, the best builds within any given archetype and in any given rank. Uh, and on top of that, uh, you will be able to, of course, enjoy the website ad free as well. So like I said, uh, this season we're going to be giving these codes out week by week instead of all at the end of the season. If you're interested at all in entering, uh, you do need to be a member of our Discord server, the Hex Lex Plex, hence of course the Plex Leaderboard Challenge. Uh, just go ahead and find the invite link to the Discord server in the description below. Uh, under the Master Duel section, uh, there is a channel called the Plex Leaderboard Challenge, and we'll have the rules available right there, and I'll even pin them up at the start. Also, uh, we're going to be announcing each week's winner at the beginning of every this uh, um, viewer special, not this week at Master Duel. Uh, we'll be announcing the, the winner at the beginning of each viewer special, uh, like I did today. So if you are interested in getting that code for some premium action over at untapped thanks again to the folks over at untapped for sponsoring and also just showing everyone exactly how good at this game you are uh then definitely go ahead and check out the link in the description below but now that we've gotten that announcement uh gotten through that uh let's go and talk of course about you all again uh, this time of course we're talking about your duels as that is what we do here on the viewer special every single week uh we are taking a look at the duels that you all have submitted also in the discord server so if you're if you're interested as well in submitting games for the channel uh that is also the place to do it again invite link is going to be in the description below um, but yeah, I, I really like looking at games from you all. If you are interested in submitting duels for the viewer special, uh, then again, you're going to want to head down to the Discord server, go to the viewer special submission channel. Main bit of information you're going to want to leave there is your nine-digit player ID. That will, of course, allow me to see all of the replays you have publicly saved. If you do have a game you want me to see, please make sure it is publicly saved. If it's not publicly saved, I'm not able to view it. Um, and also, uh, yeah, if you want to leave any bit of information about the duel, uh, particularly if you have more than one replay saved, you're definitely going to want to leave, like, the name of your opponent and or the date and time of the replay, just so I know exactly which game you want me to see, right? Um, but in addition to that, if you could even just say, like, I played this deck versus this deck, uh, that's already extremely helpful. But if you also want to talk a little bit about how the game went, that information is also very useful. Um, we do only get to cover just a few duels per week, so if yours doesn't get selected, uh, there is always the next week, and the only thing I really ask is that you don't submit the same game over and over again, but if you have 10 different replays, you can do 10 different submissions, uh, all in one week or across different weeks, I don't, it doesn't particularly matter to me, again, as, you're not, as long as you're not spamming the same game over and over again, 
yeah, feel free to submit as many as you want. That is totally fine. Uh, and I do end up watching almost every, I would say like 90% of the ones that come through. So uh, even if I didn't show it on the on the channel, know that I very likely did at the very least watch it. But um, yeah, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about before we started looking at the duels. So let's do that. Let's look at those games. Okay, so our first game is coming to us from Trey. I believe this is actually Trey's first time submitting to a viewer special. A bit of an older game we're going to watch here. I believe this is the one where we are playing Crystal Beast versus Math Mech. I don't know if I've actually featured Crystal Beast on the channel, like even on a viewer special. I know I haven't played it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look and see what is going on here. I uh, got the Fenrir as well, going to lead with that naturally, as well as the Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat, followed by the Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. Uh, I'm going to have to stop and read a couple of these. Uh, so you get extra normal stun for Crystal Beast, okay? During the main phase, you can destroy Crystal Beast card controller in your hand. If you do, add a Crystal Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. If a Crystal Beast monster sways your Spell Trap, so even, even during the damage step, you target a card your opponent controls. Oh, and then this is the one that bounces. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we know this card. Kind of, at least. <laughs> so... We get to add the Crystal Bond, it's going to let us search for another Crystal Beast, as well as place one in the Spell Trap Zone. Uh, we then get to activate our Rainbow Over Dragon to summon out the Topaz Tiger. Or not Over Dragon, that's uh, Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, right? Extra Normal Summon for Carbunk, looks like we're linking it with the Fenrir. Ooh, to summon Cross Sheep. Okay, okay, so you know we're going to get up to some amount of shenanigans here. As well as the IP Mascarena. Now we're linking these two off for... Uh, is this? Oh, it's Avermax. Okay, I was trying to guess who it was going to be by the uh, arrows. Passing over to our opponent, ending on the good old IP Avermax. So can't be destroyed by card effects. Uh, cannot be... Oh, wow. This is a... Uh, holy cyber stuff. Oh, my goodness. This is a... Uh, who? Yeah, so we started with the Bikari, and I was like, okay, adding this to Now we have a couple of cyber sponsors I'm not too familiar with. Boot Staggered. When a cyber sponsor is normal, so we can special this card from your hand. This card inflicts battle damage. You get a stag token. And then, what was the other one here? Cyber's White Hat. If you control two more monsters of the same type, you can special summon this card from your hands. So they don't even have to be cybers. Since the Leave make all monsters your opponent controls lose a thousand attack until the end of the turn. That doesn't target, so I think that will actually affect Avermax, but it's really not that big of a deal, honestly, because the. Avermax's attack points, like, it has the, you know, effect where it gains attack equal to the opponent's monster's attack, so, you know. We're not super concerned. Like, Avermax's attack could be... Well, I guess if it was zero, it would always crash, right? So it would need to be at least one. <laughs> as long as it's one higher, it got one attack point, then it'll always be one higher than whatever it's battling. Holy moly, they're going for the Fire Phoenix and leaking it off with the Transcode Talker for... <laughs> their own Avermax. Wow. Idol Reborn now is going to bring back the Fire Phoenix. And we're moving to battle. So when two Avermaxes collide, you got to remember how the Chain Link is going to resolve, right? So Chain Link's resolve backwards, and turn player always has priority. That means whoever is declaring the attack will be Chain Link 1, and whoever is being attacked is going to be Chain Link 2, right? So chains resolve backwards. Chain Link 2 resolves. Uh, our Avermax gains attack equal to their Avermax, but then Chain Link 1 is going to resolve, and their Avermax will gain attack equal to our Avermax. So if you're ever in this situation, this was a lot more common when like Sprite was a thing, like pure Sprite was like really big. Uh, if you're ever in this situation, you're ever wondering what happens. Uh, Avermax versus Avermax. Whoever declares the attack is going to end up winning, as we can see here. I only paused there because I wanted to prove that I actually knew it, <laughs> and that I wasn't just uh, waiting for the result to play out. Because, like I said, I have encountered that a fair bit. It's funny how we're like Cybers versus Crystal Beast, and this just ended up being like an Avermax mirror match. Threatening Roar. Okay, so no attacking this turn, but we do still get to, of course, do uh, literally everything else. <laughs> I mean, really, as long as we can remove these two monsters, we should be golden. And Crystal Bond is going to set us up pretty nicely here. Going to use the Rainbow Bridge to, of course, bounce the Link monster here. We need to reactivate it as well. That's actually pretty insane. I didn't even think about that, that you could just bounce and then reactivate this card and then... Yeah, you get to just do the effects again. That's pretty insane, because these are all soft ones per turns, right? Yeah, only the first, the only the additional normal summon effect is a hard once per turn. 
All right, so it looks like we didn't manage to out the Picari, but does it look like they're really doing too much with it anyway? Ah, oh, they talked to Cyanet Mining. They're going to use that to add diameter. I've not seen a circular yet, which is kind of interesting. Normal Summon the Diameter, bringing back Picari adding Mister. We're going to Synchro Summon. Oh my goodness, I didn't expect that. I thought we were going to overlay. For Borlode Savage Dragon? What the fuck? Okay. I did not expect that at all. <laughs> I did not. I expected either the Mathmech Final Sigma or like a just. I guess it's a generic A. I just didn't expect this one in particular. Opponent's going to immediately use the Borlode on the Rainbow Bridge of the Heart, which, to be fair, is a, probably a pretty good decision on their part. Um, and then we get to Normal Summon the Cobalt Eagle, which is actually going to be our seventh Crystal Beast. And we are, in fact, summoning OG Rainbow Dragon by its own effect. That's pretty wild. Not just one, but two! Right, we get to sack the Rainbow Dragon now for the fusion monster, Rainbow Over Dragon. Uh, this can be fused with seven Crystal Beast monsters, or you can special summon it by tributing a level 10 Ultimate Crystal. Rainbow Dragon and its counterparts are always Ultimate Crystal cards. Uh, now, let's go ahead and find... Oh, it's right out here, down. Uh, what does this do? Now, once per turn, you can banish a Crystal Beast monster from your graveyard. This card gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of the turn. Quick effect. You can tribute this fusion summon card. Shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. All cards. Every single one of them. I believe Rainbow Dragon has a similar effect as well, actually. <laughs> we're summoning... Oh, wait. We're summoning... Two... Hang on. No, no, no. This is a different one. This is Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon Overdrive. A fusion of an ultimate crystal monster and seven crystal beast monsters, or must be special summoned from your extract. During a duel, you special summon an ultimate crystal monster by banishing the above monsters from your field and or your graveyard. Wow. While seven or more of your crystal beast monsters with different names are banished, this card gains 7,000 attack, which it is. Uh, if this card does not battle this turn, quick effect, if you distribute this card, shuffle as many cards on the field as possible into the deck, and if you do, special summon as many of your banished crystal beast monsters. Any number. Wow. Uh, those are both references to... Uh, yeah, Rainbow Dragon has this effect if you can banish all Crystal Beast monsters from your graveyard and shuffle all cards in the field back into the deck. But we're definitely not going to need that here. We're just going to smack them for 11,000 damage casually with the Over Dragon. That's... Or the uh, Overdrive. That one. Uh, that was insane. That was... Um, <laughs> I think that, that, uh, that duel would be enough to satisfy any Crystal Beast player for a lifetime. <laughs> That was really, really good. All right, let's go ahead and check out this next game here. Thank you, Trey, for that submission. Okay, our next game comes to us from Beardman, a.k.a. Nick, over on the Discord server. Nick's got a game uh, versus Pain here. He's playing Fluanderese versus Snake Eye. So definitely eager to see, you know, uh, you know, just... Any game we're playing against the, the best deck of the format. Also, I forgot to have the deck list up for the last uh, duel. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Alright, so it's like we're going first here. We get to start with the Flanderese uh, and Advent of Adventure for the Rabina. Uh, but we can hit with the Droll and Lockbird. So that's obviously pretty rough for a flu. <laughs> Looks like we are still summoning the Rabina just to set up the Feather Storm and then passing it over to the opponent. Draw phase maxi. Uh, wanting to get that draw off the Diabo, which we do end up getting here. I will say I think it was a little bit risky, but it definitely seems to have paid off. Although, to be fair, you know, if our, if we turn skipped our opponent, I think even if we didn't top deck anything, we'd still be in a decent spot with the Feather Storm still set up anyway. So, alright, they're going to summon the Snake Eye Ash, add the Poplar, Poplar Effect to Special itself. We're still getting just a ton of draws off the Maxi here. Uh, looks like we're using the Ash Blossom against the Poplar. Here, that's going to stop the field spell from coming down, which will prevent a good number of their resources from being on the field. Alright, pretty standard stuff. Looks like they're going to go into the Link Karibo. Activating Snake Eye Ash, sacking itself in pop. They're not sacking the Link Karibo, which is kind of... Oh, but um, they might be going for the Zealantis line if they're not doing that. I was going to say, usually you sack the Link Karibo first. Well, now they're just sacking it anyway, so I guess they didn't... They're not going for any particular line here. Right, summoning the Flambridge, thinking that off with the Poplar for, is this IP? Yeah, IP Mascarena. Flambridge F is going to activate here, bringing back the Oak and the Snake Eye Ash. Now they get to make the Promethean Princess. We're being very patient here, which I definitely appreciate with the, uh, the Harpy's Feather Storm. Like, it's so easy to want to shotgun, like, um... 
you know, just like any old monster effect. Uh, or just any old effect in general. Um, oh, well, to be fair, I guess we could... This, hang on, does this require you to tribute? Or is this... Yeah, if you control until the end of the turn, negate any monster effects your opponent activates. So, like, we could have used this, but at the same time, it's like... Our opponent's not really threatening to kill us here. Uh, and that was kind of apparent from the start. Like, I kind of pointed that out with the late Krivo, that they're... It seemed like they were going for a turn one combo line instead of, like, one of the OTKs. And I wonder if we recognize that here. That's why we didn't even bother using the Feather Storm. The Feather Storm also, of course, would have prevented us from drawing a ton off of Max T, uh, which is definitely a factor, too. But, like, um, yeah, I mean, as our opponent was doing stuff here, I'm, I'm totally in agreement. Well. Like, I don't, I don't think they're doing anything, like, that's threatening to kill us here. And this is something that I've talked about before, like, relatively recently on the channel even, I think, where... A lot of the time, you can kind of tell if someone isn't as experienced, if it's like turn two and they just do the turn one combo line anyway. Uh, a lot of meta decks, as much as people like to say, oh, meta decks, they all just play themselves anyway, uh, couldn't be further from the truth, especially a deck like Snake Eyes. Um, our opponent definitely had the setup to go for like a, a Zealantis OTK or an Axis Code line or something, in which case we could have, of course, used a Feather Storm to stop that. Um, but I like the fact that we just let them do their thing and just got a bunch of draws because we weren't going to lose anyway. Uh, I think that ended up panning out pretty well for us here. Okay, so they're making an Appalooza, including leaking off the Ambler Whale, which is kind of interesting. Alright, so we get to DD Crow the Flamber. Just won't negate it, unfortunately. Um, but it does actually draw out an Appalooza and negate. So that's pretty cool. That is actually a pretty good move to just, like, bait the opponent. All right, we're going to use Oak to bring back Poplar. Or they're going to use Oak, rather, to bring back Poplar. Ash F proccing as well. They'll probably add either Curry Car or another Ash. It was Jet Synchron. That's not at all what I expected. Okay. And then Oak's going to bring back Poplar. Poplar's going to activate. Now we get the Field Spell? Yeah, now we get the Field Spell. <laughs> they're going to use Lee Kribo as well. This is all fine, by the way, because we have the Continuous Spell up. So, like... Even them having, like, the Appalooza here, just, like, super doesn't matter. Oh, uh, we also get to Chain Block with the Banished Rabina, so, like, this Appalooza effect here... I mean, we're just gonna Feather Storm it anyway, but this Appalooza effect didn't even... It wouldn't have even have stopped the Eaglen, right? But, to be fair, um, we do get our Rabina... I mean, I think we had a Rabina in hand anyway. Yeah, we did, okay. Oh, we're going for the Snow. That's fun. Well, M-Pen first. M-Pen... And, of course, that'll proc the Eaglet effect as well. All three of our Eaglins in hand, casually. What does our graveyard look like? Okay, I was gonna say, we have probably too many cards to reasonably shift through this game. Well, duh, of course, we've been throwing out hand traps. Of course we do. And there it is, the snow as well. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, we're just, like, full... We're doing full Flandery stuff here. We got the snow, we got the field spell, we got the M-Pen. Which, by the way, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Come on, Konami. This card does not need to be at 1. Th this card also does not need to be at 1. But M-Pen especially never needed to be at 1. Like, beyond ridiculous. Completely beyond ridiculous. Speaking of beyond ridiculous, this, uh... This board state, this, like, game state in general that we ended up in is 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 pretty ridiculous as well. Coming back against the the Snake Eye full combo here. Which, again, they did do a turn one combo on turn two. They could have done better. But also, to be fair, we didn't need our Harpy's Feather Storm during their turn at all. We also have another one here, funnily enough, which is really, really cool. Alright, so we're going to use the original Sin. Or they're going to try to use the original Sin. Looks like we're using the Apex Avian against that. To negate that... Therefore, they can't get another level 1 monster. We know they have, yeah, the Field Spell and Jet Synchron. They placed a Birch and then conceded. They didn't even try. They didn't even try. <laughs> That's so good. All right, good stuff. Thank you very much for that submission there, Nick. Super duper appreciated. Uh, showing that even if Flanderese is... Honestly, at this point, not even at this point, it's been unfairly bullied by Konami. Um... And even if you don't like the deck, you have to admit that, right? Like, like I'm not a particularly huge fan of Flanderies uh, at all, but even I can admit that, like, yeah, the treatment this deck has gotten is is nothing short of bullying um, from Konami as far as, like, its hits on the ban list. But despite that, uh, the deck is not only still good, but actually very well poised in this meta in particular, um, especially getting able being able to play stuff like DD Crow and Dimension Shifter very easily. All right, we have one more game we're going to check out. Let us head into that here.
Okay, so our last duel for this video comes to us from Kelto28. Uh, Kelto28 has a game, actually, let me pull this back up here. Yeah, so this is going to be, this duel here will be Snake Eye Dragon Link versus Pure Snake Eye. Snake Eye Dragon Link. I had to see this list. I had to guard Dragon Prom. Ah, they, ah, level 1 Fire Dragon. I knew of Flamvel Guard. That was the first one I thought of, but I wonder if there were going to be other ones. All right. Yeah, I'm eager to see how this plays out for sure. We're on a 60. We are on a 60 card deck. Hell yeah. The opponent's going to lead with Diabelle Pitching Droll. Let's look at the extra deck too here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. This is cool. This is a cool list. I like this. All right. We get to chain the Maxi in response to the original Sin. We also have Ash and Nib here. So we are looking pretty good drawing. Ooh, that Snake Eye Ash. Gotta be a good draw there. We're letting the Snake Eye Ash resolve. We're not even gonna Ash Blossom it. I actually really respect that, given that we have max seed them. Uh, there are a lot of players, honestly, myself included, like I'm pretty guilty of doing stuff like this, where like they'll max seed at the start of the combo line and then still throw out negates that'll keep them from getting draws. Um, but here we're not even gonna use the Ash Blossom on the Snake Eye Ash. We're just gonna let them Combo out and get our draws. Ah, oh, opponent is so greedy here. Wow, they didn't... Wait, 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 wait. Our opponent triple tagged. Didn't combo afterward, but also didn't hand ramp. They drew two. I mean, to be fair, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in hand. So, like, maybe our opponent figured this was too many... I mean, wouldn't you want information anyway? Maybe their hand was just that bad. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a world where... You're not going to play anymore, but you triple attack to draw to instead of hand rep. I think the opponent's mentality was, again, you know, we're going to have, we have seven cards in hand. There's no way one hand rep will be good enough, but I still think it would have been. I think hand ripping the Snake Eye Ash might have done a fair bit here, but I don't know enough about this deck to know that for sure. Yeah, we're definitely going to start by normal summoning. I guess to be fair, they, they, they did get a Veiler, or maybe they already had one. If they already had one, then drawing two off triple attack was definitely a mistake. They definitely should have hand ripped. If they had any amount of disruption, those two cards they were already holding. Okay, so we're going to wear off that for the Poplar. Wear off that definitely seems pretty good in this deck where we have multiple level 1 targets. I mean, to be fair, so does this deck too, but... Normal, or especially in Poplar, rather, and then of course they get to use the Divine Temple to summon the Flamberge Dragon. Gonna add us the original sin here. Flamberge F is gonna activate to summon out the Snake Eye Ash. Ash F will activate. We're gonna use our Ash Blossom against the Snake Eye Ash now. Uh, opponent's going to chain the IP. This won't stop the Ash Blossom from negating the Snake Eye Ash. Okay, looks like they're gonna go for an Underworld Goddess. Just pretty good in Snake Eye, honestly. Kind of been thinking about uh, putting one in mine. It's like, of course, not only is it good as a board breaker with IP, but also the ability, honestly, the ability to negate uh, the opponent's board and, moreover, negate effects that special summon from the graveyard is is very, very good right now, if, if you can believe that. <laughs> Original Sinful uh, Subversion, the normal spell, another card I've been meaning to try out, and definitely one that is seeing uh, more and more play, I've noticed, as time goes on, and definitely both sides of this matchup have it, so... All right, now we get to go for our original Sin. We're sending out this Snake Eye Oak. Snake Eye Oak F will bring back the Ash. Now we have both Ash and Oak's effects available to us. We get to use Ash, stack it with Poplar, go for the Flamberge Dragon, uh, activating the Flamberge to push back their Snake Eye Ash. It's in this card from the Hand of the Graveyard. Okay, so that's how we get our Dragon established. We can discard the Guard Dragon by its own effect. And then now when we use Flamberge Dragon, we get to bring it back, right? No, we're just bringing back Snake Eye stuff. <laughs> but I think the idea is that you can then use Flamberge to bring back a level 1 Dragon and then go into Dragon Play. Oh! Flamberge, of course, is also a Dragon. And here, that went by a little bit quickly, but that was a really, really good play. We used Hita to bring back our opponent's Flamberge out of their graveyard and then banished it to summon Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, thus getting it out of rotation. That was good. That was really, really good. And now here we're doing the Dragon Link stuff. Oh my god. Alright, going for the Pisty. And we have the Hita to set up as well. Now Pisty and uh, Guard Dragon. Yeah, we have the Hita to set up the Pisty and the Guard Dragon is what I meant. 
And Pissy can bring back Flamberge. <laughs> That's so gross. I doesn't really do anything here. I think we've already used Flamberge's effect, but still. Just the notion of it. Wow, this is a really cool combo line. Holy shit. I haven't, like, seen this deck or, like, heard people talk about this concept at all. This is sick, actually. <laughs> this is, like, really sick. Alright, so Borload F. We're gonna pop their Poplar. Pop. Or not pop their Poplar. We're just negating it. Let's not sing the future on the song again. A fucking song. It's so stuck in my head ever since this card became a thing. Poplar. Alright, Prometheum Princess bringing back the Flamberge. Now we get to activate Ravine. Ravine F. We're not done. Pitching Nib. Sending Absorator. Absorator F to add the Rocket Caliber. Moving to battle phase, we're going to Promethean Princess battle over the Poplar. Poplar F will put probably itself, yeah, in this spell trap zone. Flamberge battles, Warland battles. And I mean, we're looking really, really good here. Yeah, we're not even, yeah, we still get to go for the Ambler Whale. Ah, it's too bad we couldn't find that last 600. Oh, yeah, we're Arf now. It's like 2000. It's like, oh, yeah, we're Arf now. The opponent's going to throw out a Max C straight away before normal summoning the Snake Eye Ash. We're going to use the Borland Dragon to negate that as well as special summon the Boral... Or the, uh, Rocket... Recharger, that one. Um... <laughs> Alright, they get to summon out another Snake Eye Ash with a Field Spell. We're going to use the Promethean Princess to pop the Snake Eye Ash that was just summoned. That might seem a little weird. You may be wondering, why did we bother to pop that Snake Eye Ash? Uh, it's because that one isn't negated, but this one is. So, if... The non-negated Sekai Ash was out. They could have used some amount of Flambridge via the effect here. Ah, uh, looks like they end up top decking an original Sin. Or maybe just had it at some point. Have they even... Okay, they have already normal summoned, so that makes a little more sense. I was like, why'd they bother especially from hand? I thought they had normal yet. Of course they normal summoned Sekai Ash. Right at the start here. Oak F to bring back Poplar. There's their original Sin... Um, or not original sin, sinful spoils of subversion to push back our Borland. They do get access to the Flamberge here. Flamberge F is going to push back our Promethean Princess. Alright, now they're going for heat. Ugh, this isn't looking good. Now they're getting to mount a bit of a comeback here. Although, to be fair, it's like if we can just survive this turn, which might be a bit of a big ask, <laughs> we should be good. Because we have Original Sin in the yard, though. Actually, do we? We sent that up, didn't we? Yeah, 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 we have Original Sin in the yard. So, like, as long as we get another turn, we'll be good. We only have to deal 600 damage. It's not that much. So, like, really, you know, this is one of those game states where you just gotta live. Sometimes the most important thing isn't, like, how am I gonna win, necessarily? It's just, how am I gonna make it to the next turn so I, like, have an opportunity to win? Oh, they made a... Ah, I think our opponent made a mistake here. Actually, I know they did. Because I think this Zeolanth is going to give us back our Ambla Whale, isn't it? It is, yeah. They linked off the wrong Ambla Whale. They are supposed to link ours off. If they had linked theirs off, they would have gotten their Ambla Whale back. Instead, Zeolanth is going to give us our Ambla Whale back. They do get... I mean, they would have gotten a Summon Promethean Princess either way, but now we get to proc our Ambla Whale effect. And steal their IP. That's dirty. Granted, our monsters are face down, so we can't do anything with it. But still, that's that's fun. <laughs> we get to use both Amber Whales are proccing now. Oh, these 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 Snake Eye mirrors can be something else, huh? Damn. Yeah, they linked off the right. You got it. That's why you gotta keep track of like when you're, especially in this matchup. Uh, this mirror match, a snake eye mirror, when you're, like, taking stuff, you gotta keep track of whose is what. Um, because, not only because of Zealantis, but also because Flamberge, don't forget that Flamberge will always put the monster back to its owner's spell trap zone. So if they steal, if you get in a Flamberge fight where they steal your Flamberge, they, blah, where they steal your Flamberge with theirs, you can take your Flamberge back by putting it into your spell trap zone with another Flamberge, Jeff. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Speaking of Flamberge, back on the field again. Opponent's maxi does hit again. Wow. Using Flamberge to push back one of the princesses. Going to activate the ravine as well as the guard dragon. Guard dragon F is going to summon itself and then link off into the striker dragon. 
It's like, we just got to deal 600. We just got to deal 600. <laughs> Adding back Recharger. Recharger F to pitch itself to bring back the Boraland. There we go. That'll do it. Yep. And then, yeah, we can just negate the Zealantis when the battle phase starts. I mean, the Boraland can't even be destroyed by card effects anyway, so... The Zealantis wouldn't have done anything against it. Whew, that was a... Uh... That was a really fucking good game. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you very much for that submission, Kelto. Thank you to everyone who submitted this week. We had a ton of great submissions. Uh, as always, as ever, uh, you know, like I said in the beginning, I, I really wish I could show every single one of them, but we only have so much time per week. But again, um, we do this every single week, so even if you weren't featured today... Uh, you will definitely still have more opportunities. And again, uh, if you are interested in showing off just how good you are, uh, you can definitely enter the Plex Leaderboard Challenge. Uh, again, that's going to be both if you want to submit games and also enter the Leaderboard Challenge. Uh, definitely check out the Discord in the description below, the invite link there. But that is going to do it. Uh, thank you, everybody, so, so very much for um, submitting and for... Not just submitting for the viewer special, but again, also participating in the Plex Leaderboard Challenge. Just like, this community engagement stuff is really cool to see. Uh, it's, it's something that still blows my mind that, like, yeah, that we, we actually have, like, a cool, chill community. Not that, like, I didn't think you were all going to be cool and chill, but it's, like, the fact that we all came together to, like, form this community, I think, is just still so wild. Uh, thank you all so very much for, for your, uh, your continued patronage and participation and everything. It's all very much appreciated and cool and good. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let us now go to the outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.